One of the most hyped sequels in gaming that was never released was Star Wars Battlefront 3. Now, Battlefront 3 was rumored various times to be in development, and leaks, in fact, showed that the game was in development. However, it had a very troubled development cycle, and it was eventually canned. Now, several years ago, leaked footage was released of this game to the internet, and it made rounds on quite a few gaming sites, including Shack News and Kotaku. And despite the game's buggy state, it's easy to see why this footage went viral. After all, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was one of the most well-known Star Wars games, and for a good reason. Despite balance issues and glitches, it managed to be a popular game as it took the massive battles from the Star Wars movies and applied the concept to a multiplayer shooter. It was a success, and despite the player base mostly dying off due to the game spy shutdown and few players using programs such as Game Ranger or alternate master servers such as Game Master, many gamers still talk about this. So, of course, because of these leaks, Star Wars Battlefront 3 became the Star Wars version of Star Fox 2 and the fact that everybody talks about it and wants to play it badly, except while Star Fox 2 was nearly completed, if not fully completed, Star Wars Battlefront 3 was an unfinished game that was never released, and of course, if you look at gameplay footage, it ran like crap. So it's no surprise that there was tons of hype when not only was it shown at an E3 that EA was making a new Battlefront game, but that DICE was going to be the developer. After all, DICE is the developer of the Battlefield series, and most likely the inspiration for the developers of the Star Wars Battlefront games. In fact, the main game mode in Battlefront is a straight copy of Battlefield's Conquest mode, where you have to capture points and avoid losing tickets which are decreased when you kill an enemy. On paper, this sounds like a match made in heaven. What could possibly go wrong with this? Well, EA Star Wars Battlefront just came out, and let's take a look at this game to see what could go wrong. Now, Star Wars Battlefront for the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC has big shoes to fill. After all, Battlefront 2 is a well-known game on the original Xbox, PS2, and PC, and until original Xbox Live shut down, it was one of the most played games on that platform, along with the PS2 before GameSpy shut down, even years after it originally came out. Sadly, however, the new Battlefront, or Star Wars Battlefront EA as the box art would imply, is a major step backwards compared to Battlefront 2. Let's start with the first problem this game has, which is the lack of content. Now, one thing a shooter needs to have if it wants to last a long time is a good amount of content out of the gate on day one. Star Wars Battlefront launches with 13 maps spread out over four planets. Battlefront 2, on the other hand, shipped with a lot more maps spanning not only multiple planets, but even a few ships in the Star Wars universe, such as Death Star or Tentative 4, you know, the iconic ship you see during the introduction sequence to the first Star Wars movie, and that's not even counting the space maps, the Xbox Live DLC maps, or the mods for the PC version of the game. Now, while this likely isn't going to be a problem for that fraghead who wants to play the same three maps over and over again on repeat, this will be a problem for anyone looking to play this $60 game for more than a few weeks. To make matters worse, the game is advertising a season pass on day one, and it just gets worse. You see, EA isn't telling you what you're getting for your $50 season pass, which makes you wonder what's the point of blowing $50 right now on content you don't even know about. Now, you might be thinking that this game will offer more single-player content to make up for that, right? I mean, Battlefront 2 gave you multiple offline modes. It had a bot mode, and bots could be placed on games hosted either online, in a LAN, or even with split-screen. It also had a campaign, which was a series of missions with similar game to multiplayer, and a galactic conquest mode, which allowed you to conquer enemies with the same gameplay as the main game. EA's Battlefront only allows you to access a few modes which play nothing like the online modes, including a horde mode and some missions. That's it. No offline bot matches with the same exact modes as the online mode are present, unlike Battlefront 2, or other popular shooters such as recent entries in the Call of Duty series or various Counter-Strike games. Unlike Battlefront 2 on the original Xbox, the game also lacks split-screen online, so you can't jump in with a friend or neighbor to take out enemies on the same TV. Speaking of the online modes, the game does have quite a few online modes, but the problem is they all play the same, and this is made worse by the various assign decisions made somewhere on down the line during development, likely from someone at either EA or Disney. 
One common criticism made by people who have not played the game is that the game is Battlefield with Star Wars in it. Now this is quite ironic as you could say the same thing about Battlefront 2. After all, not only is the main game type in the Battlefront series a clone of Battlefields, but many design concepts from Battlefield were carried over to the original Battlefront game such as class selection, tickets, and the ability to get in and out of vehicles at bases. Instead, however, this game feels like it was trying to pander to the most safe, mainstream, and casual audience possible. Gameplay involves the same shoot, camp, die gameplay you've come to expect from modern Infinity War games, and maps feel more like trench warfare than an epic Star Wars battle. Thanks to this, the game is capped at 40 players in one game type, with the most people in it, compared to 64 for both Battlefront 2 and Battlefield 4, with the latter even being on consoles, and many game types are capped at even lower than 40 players. Classes are gone, and you always play as the same exact soldier or hero if you pick up an item, though I'll talk about that more later. Instead, you have to use loadouts, except there's only one loadout class, you can equip different weapons, and you have to unlock many things in the game, such as grenades, for example, and then use points to pay for the unlocks, kind of like later Treyarch Call of Duties. So while older Battlefront games had classes and would put everybody on a nearly equal playing ground, this game does not. And to make matters worse, this game has some of the most casualized gameplay of any modern shooter. Aiming feels like pointing and clicking, literally. No need to worry about factors such as bullet drop or recoil because you can just fire away until your weapon overheats before firing some more and dying fast from a camper. Now while many guns in Battlefront 2 had ammunition which you could pick up from either dead enemies or an ammo droid, EA's Battlefront has infinite ammo. It also features regenerating health while Battlefront 2 required you to use a medical droid or health pickup from a dead enemy to regain health. EA's Battlefront also introduces a new innovation for casual gamers. Deeming killstreaks in games such as Call of Duty too hard to obtain, everything is now a power-up. If you want a vehicle, overpowered gun, or piece of equipment, or the ability to even become a hero, just walk right over to it, press both bumpers at once once you've obtained it, and boom, you can get into a vehicle or become a hero. And yeah, the vehicles just spawn instantly in the map once you press the bumpers, like in Call of Duty, they do not feel like they do in Battlefield or Battlefront. Now in Battlefront 2, unless the server administrator changed the settings, you could only get the hero if you got so many points or kills. I forget what it was exactly, but you get the idea. In EA's Battlefront, it's like getting a participation prize. All you have to do is get the hero pickup and boom, you're playing as a hero. That's it. Vehicles in EA's Battlefront control poorly. Take the controls of a driving or open world game where all the cars drive like boats and then apply them to a game where you have to fly an aircraft. Instead of being able to attack anything, your vehicle will likely crash and especially if you're trying to shoot objects on the ground. Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the other hand, not only gives you vehicles that control more like they do in Battlefield which allows you to feel like part of an epic large scale battle, but Star Wars Battlefront 2 also gave you a greater variety of vehicles, as Star Wars Battlefront 2 gave you vehicles that came straight out of both the Clone War era and the Empire era. In fact, the Toth map on Star Wars Battlefront 2 is even complete with Tauntauns, you know, the animals from the first part of the Empire Strikes Back, you know, during the Battle of Hoth? Yeah, that game has them. You know what doesn't have them? EA Star Wars Battlefront. In EA Battlefront, though, if you encounter someone else in the air, you get to experience amazing lock-on point-and-click combat, which feels bland and boring. I mean, all you have to do is hold down one trigger, and then just shoot the other, and boom, it aims for you, and you just have to shoot away, and you can take out enemies like crazy. It feels bland and boring compared to Battlefront 2, which even offered space battles. Oh, and this game lacks space battles, too, instead giving you aerial battles on a planet which featured the point-and-click combat I talked about. Battlefront 2, on the other hand, not only had epic battles in space, but it even allowed you to board the enemy ship, take out key components of the ships, along with the shield, and allowing you to destroy ships right next to the other ship to take down their defenses. And combat felt more rewarding in space than aerial combat does in EA Star Wars Battlefront. Despite the game's reliance on team-based game types with objectives that you have to complete, the game lacks any sort of voice communication whatsoever, not even with squads like with Battlefield. The PC version of the game 
features only text chat, while consoles get no voice communication whatsoever, despite the fact that it's seen as normal in games to include it these days. You do, however, get Team Fortress 2 style emotes, which communicate just as much to your team as Splatoon's D-pad does. And did I mention that Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the Xbox, along with Battlefront 1, had voice chat? And I think Battlefront 2 on the PlayStation 2 has voice chat too, though I was never able to test it as I do not have a compatible USB headset. Player-run dedicated servers are also missing. Despite being a presence in even many console versions of Battlefield and all previous Battlefront games, they are absent in EA's Battlefront, no matter the platform. Instead, all you get is matchmaking, and that's it. The graphics in this game are what you'd expect for a Frostbite 3 engine game having similar graphics to Battlefield 4. They are very impressive, however, there is some blur due to the game running at a lower resolution on consoles, and sometimes there's an animation glitch or two. The game now runs at mostly 60 frames a second compared to Battlefield 4's inconsistent frame rate with some frame rate drops here or there. However, the game does not feature destruction on the same scale, likely keeping the frame rate up at the expense of the ability to blow up skyscrapers and buildings. If you're looking for a next-gen game to push your rigor console though, why not just get Battlefield 4? In fact, if anything, this game feels like a watered-down version of Battlefield 4 for kids and casuals. Don't interpret this as some joke, though, because EA CEO Andrew Wilson pretty much admitted the game was made for kids and casuals, or in his words, quote, lapsed gamers and younger players. So, unless you're a kid or casual, avoid this game and go straight to Battlefield 4, available for around $13 used on Amazon right now because you'll have a lot more fun with that game. And in fact, it even feels more like a next-gen Battlefront game than a Star Wars game does gameplay-wise. Or go with Battlefront 2 for $10 on Steam because it's far better than this. In all other cases, avoid this game and leave it where it belongs, right in the bargain bin. Also, if this game is any indication, then the future of Star Wars games is pretty grim. Expect more casualized trash to come. I mean, after all, the game is $60, and it's mostly relying on the hype from Star Wars Episode 7 to sell. I mean, who knows if that movie will be just like the last time George Lucas made a trilogy, but in the end, this game just isn't that great, and it feels like a pure cash-in. Just avoid this game and do not buy it, because if you buy this game, you're pretty much sending a message to Disney and EA that it's okay to make casualized garbage Star Wars video games, because that's what this is, garbage. And you know how I mentioned the Star Fox 2 effect earlier in this video, where people are talking about that game like it was this amazing sequel that never was? Well, because of how EA Star Wars Battlefront was, people are now talking about Star Wars Battlefront 3 again, like it's this mythical game that would have been a lot better than Star Wars Battlefront from EA. And they do have a point here, because Star Wars Battlefront from EA is a total joke of a game. And that's all that needs to be said. Thanks for watching, and subscribe for more.